morning, Nashville Arts readers. Uh, welcome to the kitchen here at Watermark Restaurant in the Gulch in Nashville. Today we're going to prepare a pan roasted venison leg fillet. Right now I'm preparing to uh, marinate the venison, which later we're going to pair with some roasted spaghetti squash with some currants and pine nuts. Uh, first thing that we're going to do today is I have a venison leg fillet here inside this Ziploc bag, trimmed of its uh, any silver skin. And we're gonna add all of our herbs, whole herbs today. Right here I've got rosemary, parsley, and thyme, all from our garden out front on the rooftop. Uh, in addition to that, I've got some toasted uh, black peppercorns and juniper berries, and then a couple of cloves of crushed garlic there. And uh, some nice olive oil from Suicide Valley Napa from my friend Albert Katz. We're gonna take all these whole herbs and just add them to the bag along with the garlic and the juniper and black pepper. And we're gonna take this great olive oil. And to finish it all off, we're gonna add a, uh, a generous portion of Kentucky grade A maple syrup. So we're gonna squeeze out as much air out of here as we can to get a good coverage. For the next step, we're going to roast this spaghetti squash uh, in a 350 degree oven for about an hour. And uh, I'm stabbing it with this uh, meat fork here just so that it doesn't explode while it's in there. In order to macerate the raisins for this recipe, um, I just take California golden raisins, pour a little bit of uh, dry sherry over. Uh, next step, I'm going to take these pine nuts and spread them out on a sheet pan. Uh, put them in the oven about 375 for maybe five minutes. After about five minutes in the oven, take them out and we toss them with a little olive oil and salt and this is the end result. At this point, it's been about six hours. Our venison is nicely marinated. We're going to remove it from its uh, plastic bag. and try to rub off as much of the, uh, the juniper and peppercorns as possible in the herbs. All that stuff will burn in the pan if it gets in the pan. Uh, but today we're going to take and cut it into four equal portions. Our next step is to take the portion venison, season all over with salt and freshly ground pepper. Now, we've got a pan over here on the stove getting hot, medium high heat. We're going to add a little bit of this blended olive oil. It's 70% uh, extra virgin olive oil, 30% vegetable oil, in this case canola. We're just going to mirror the face of the pan. Next, we want to add the venison to the pan. You want to be sure to use a pan large enough that you're not crowding the meat because we obviously we want to sear it, we don't want to steam it. And that's what happens if your pat are too tight. We're going to let the venison sit here and sear for about one minute on each side, just enough to develop a nice brown crust on it. I would say that's a perfect sear. And it's, don't worry about the color being too light at this moment because it's going to darken a little bit more when you put it in the oven. We've got our oven preheated to 375. Just put it right in there in the pan. And we're going to let that sit in the oven about five minutes so that it comes out nice and clear. This is the result after about five minutes in the oven. Uh, you can see that the venison has developed a nice crust on the outside. Uh, you can definitely smell the maple. And our next step is to take this and uh, put it on a plate with some spaghetti squash. Okay, it's been about an hour. We're going to go in our oven and take our spaghetti squash out. You can see it's got a lot of nice color on it. And you just want it to be 
a little bit yielding because it's steaming inside of the shell. So now that our spaghetti squash is out of the oven, let it cool down for a couple minutes so you don't burn yourself. We're going to take it and split it down the middle. Makes it a little bit easier if you cut the stem end off. And it should come right out of the shell. And you're going to take that squash, nice. cut it in the middle, and then use a spoon to remove the seeds. For the next step, we're going to take a fork and pretty much just shred the spaghetti squash. This is why they call it spaghetti squash because it turns into these fun little uh, spaghetti like threads of squash, which have a very, very interesting, unique texture in the finished dish. Now for the spaghetti squash. We've got a pan on the stove over here getting hot. Once again, uh, medium heat this time. Because this is kind of a, we're gonna saute it for a few minutes instead of a quick sear. We've got the spaghetti squash here that we've pulled from the shell. I'm gonna add just a touch of blended oil to the pan. I'm gonna put the squash in. Get it coated there. Next, we're going to add the sherry macerated raisins and we're going to do this off the heat because there's a chance you could get a flame here. And then the toasted pine nuts. Give that a toss. Add a generous handful of cold butter. for one more second until the butter just starts to melt and then you're going to take it off the heat and pretty much just stir it until the butter melts as that's happening you're going to add a little bit of local Tennessee USA honey farm honey from Goodlettsville Tennessee And that's going to bring it all together. Just once you see that last little knob of butter disappear, you're ready to go on a plate. Now all that's left is to uh, plate this up and eat. You'll see how the butter has emulsified with the sherry and the honey and made it a beautiful little sauce. Take out your spaghetti squash. Put it right in the middle of your plate. And uh, I like to tilt the pan to the side and get all that goodness down the bottom here. Next step is to plate your venison. Now you can leave this whole and just set it on top like this, or, or to make it a little bit more dramatic, you can take it and slice it across the grain. Place it like that. Thank you Nashville Arts Readers for joining us today in uh, preparing maple glazed venison like filet with pine nuts, spaghetti squash, and golden raisins, macerated in cherry. I uh, hope you enjoy this dish. It definitely speaks of fall, and uh, I'm going to go eat this one right now.